Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. O God, whose Son Jesus is the good shepherd of your people, Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. This is the fourth Sunday of Easter. It's called Good Shepherd Sunday. It's always the Sunday when we remember that Jesus is our shepherd and that we are the sheep of his hand, as one of the great psalms says. That we are Christ's sheep and he is the one who guides and leads us. I like to think that the best way for us to understand what it means that Jesus is shepherd is for us to concentrate on what it means that we are his sheep. Because in fact, there are certain behaviors and realities for sheep that actually speak real truth and clarity to who we are, what we have as, as great gifts and powers, what we have as limitations, what we have as needs. For Jesus to be our shepherd We must be his sheep. And to think about sheep gives us an understanding of who we are and how we are and how very much we need Christ as our lead. So this is what I like to call the seven habits of highly effective sheep. First of all, and you know, not to lead with one that could be offensive, but we do need to be honest with ourselves. Sheep are dumb. Now listen, this doesn't mean we're dumb. We have great capacities. We are able to uh, choose many things in our lives. We can choose our careers. We can choose our lunch. Uh, We can choose how we want to direct uh, our lives. But there is a whole level of direction and leadership that we are unable to provide for ourselves. That is to say, how do we as individuals get to the place that God has prepared for us? How do we as human human beings, as God's great large flock, get from where we are to where God's dream for us um, would have us be? How do we chart that course? How do we direct the larger processes of of our times, of our civilization, of our lives? There is a whole level of leadership and of guidance and of clarity and of strategy that our small minds are just not capable of processing. The sheep of the field cannot see the bigger picture. They don't see the the lion and the, the bear coming from afar. They don't see precisely where the storms are that are coming and the way to take the path down the mountain to get back to the sheepfold. The sheep can't see it. 
And if they could see it, they wouldn't fully understand. To recognize that sheep have limitations is to recognize how very much we need a shepherd, how very much we need Christ as our shepherd to give us that high-level guidance that we can't provide for ourselves. And how grateful ought the sheep to be, really? I mean, I personally feel it, to have a shepherd who has that kind of insight and is willing to give it to me and to you and to us for our sake. Second, sheep are not strong. Now listen, sheep can do the sheep thing great. They can run through the fields. They can certainly chase after one another. We are, as human beings, strong in many ways. There's a lot that we can do. There's a lot of capacity that we have. But there is a whole level of predator that comes against us as human beings, that comes against us as Christ's sheep, that we are not equipped to defend ourselves against or attack um, uh, in, in order to give ourselves defense. Christ is the one who's equipped. When sin comes against us, this is not something that we have in our nature, in our natural um, fold of, of, of abilities and skills to be able to defend ourselves against sin. We can stop it in small ways, and the sheep can run away from the wolf for just so long. But if the wolf is persistent, the sheep will go down unless it's protected by its shepherd. We have sin that comes against us. We have death that comes against us. We have addictions that rise up and come against us. These are spiritual powers. They're spiritual predators. And we and our sheepness are not designed or able to defend ourselves adequately against them. Thanks be to God, we've got a shepherd. (laughs) Isn't that right? Christ is the one. When you read in the 23rd Psalm, that rod and thy staff, they come for me. This is why. Because the shepherd has a rod and the shepherd has a staff, and these are used to defend the sheep against anything that would come against them. Christ is the one who's equipped to go out and take it to sin and destroy sin before it can come to us. Christ is the one who can take it to death and destroy death so that we as God's sheep, as Christ's sheep, could have the eternal life that God wants for us. Christ is the one who has the power to hold up his staff against addiction and to break its hold on God's sheep and to set us free. And to realize that we don't have that capacity helps us to realize that the shepherd does and how very much we need the shepherd and can trust the shepherd to do those things for us and with us and on our behalf for our greater good. As sheep, we are loved that much. Now third, sheep follow sheep. It's one of the things they do, right? You can just imagine, you know, they're they're jumping over the fence and they're running around the field and one goes up the mountain and they all go up the mountain. Sheep follow sheep. You can see this well illustrated if you look at a a sheepdog. The whole idea of a sheepdog is to get one of them or a few of them going in the right direction and the whole flock is going to go that way as well. Sheep follow sheep. This tells us something about who we are and how we are. For us to stop and to realize that the people that are in our lives, the influences of whatever they are, people or, or programs or music or, um, or magazines or what you watch on the internet or cable television, Facebook, all of the things that we're surrounded by are influences on us. And maybe in our greatest imagination, we think that we have the capacity to hold up against them and to be individuals in the face of whatever we might be surrounded. But the fact of the matter is sheep follow sheep. And these things influence us. And to realize it is for us to say, to stop and to look around and say, are these things that I want charting my course? To realize that we are inclined to follow these things, to take these behaviors and make them our own, to take these ways of being or ways of talking or ways of thinking or ways of acting, ways of treating people and to adopt them, to see them so much that they become a part of our our own nature. And maybe they stop even being choices at some point because they become a part of who we are. This gives us clarity to stop and think, are these the sheep that I want in my immediate fold? Are these sheep that I want to follow? And maybe give us some clarity or some impetus, some some inspiration to clear out uh, the deck of, of what is nearby so that we surround ourselves by those influences that are best for us to make us strong and healthy and whole. 
Because sheep follow sheep for, it also behooves us to realize that we are leaders of other people in, um, in our lives. We are the sheep that they're inclined to follow. You might think, oh, I'm just a person in a household. I'm just an employee in the business. I'm just a member of the book club. I'm just, I'm just another person. We're just a bunch of people that get together. I'm not the leader. But in fact, sheep follow sheep. And when one sheep goes in a direction, the others see it and are inclined to want to follow it as well. You and I, we are leaders of the people who we encounter. And that's a responsibility to recognize that the people who are watching us and listening to us are influenced by us. Again, it gives us a kind of a, a courage and a, a clarity to decide what kind of influence do we want to be. And in what ways, if we're going to influence those around us, then how best can we influence those people in our circles towards what is good and holy and faithful and true? Now, fifth, and this is maybe one of the most important ones, sheep are valuable. We may not be the smartest creature in the field. We may not be the, the strongest when it comes to going against predators. We might be inclined to follow one another, but ask yourself this, why was the shepherd willing to give his life, his life's work, right, his life's effort, to give his time, to give his, his favor, to give his energy to the sheep, because the sheep matter. You matter to Christ. You are invaluable to God. You are precious. You are holy. You are a treasure to be protected, to be watched over, to be guided, even in the case of, 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 our, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, even to be died for. Why else does he go up to the cross but for you and for me? Because we matter that much to him. Never forget how precious you are, how valuable you are, how important you are to God, and how very loved you are by your Savior. Now, sheep count, and because sheep are valuable, sixth, the shepherd is always counting, right? The shepherd's always looking and making sure the shepherd counts as they come out of the sheepfold. The shepherd counts, counts as they go in. The shepherd counts throughout the day. And what that means is the shepherd is always watching to make sure that nobody drifts away, not a single one. This is inspiration for us to keep an eye on one another, to not let people on the margins of our lives fall off of the edge of our lives, that we don't see them again, but to notice. To notice when we haven't heard from so-and-so for so long. To notice when it's, it's been too long since we've been connected. And then to reach out. To count, to realize who's missing. And then to reach out with our love and our attention. To, to call them back. To let them know that they matter to us. And to, to bring us back into a, a coherent and, and holy whole even if it's a, a hole that we hold in our hearts, that everyone might be close and no one would be lost. Finally, seven, the seven habits of highly effective sheep. Finally, we remember, we hear it today, that sheep know their shepherd's voice. And this is maybe the most comforting of all is to realize that we don't have to struggle or wonder. We can tell the voice of love when it speaks in our heart. We recognize the voice of truth when it calls us to what is good. We know the voice of our shepherd. We know the voice of our savior. And when the voice calls us out, we um, have that confidence to be able to follow. My friends, these are the seven habits of highly effective sheep. They teach us and remind us who we are. And they um, inspire and encourage us to perk up our sheep ears, to listen to the voice of our Savior, to follow where he leads, to call upon and count on his protection, to recognize what it means in our relationship and responsibilities for each other, and to realize how very important we are to our God, who would give anything to keep the flock safe and does have a vision for us of where he wants to lead us and his confidence that he will do anything to bring us safely home. Amen.
We continue now with our prayers. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation and the world. For the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, <clears throat> for whoever your bishop may be, ours is Bishop Bonnie, she's fantastic. And for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, I invite your prayer silently or aloud. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins, saying together, Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Peace be with you. We continue now at the Lord's table. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Savior, my gosh, shepherd, leave us as we need our tender care in thy plans and pastures us for our use, for our souls prepare. Let us have Jesus, let us have Jesus, thou hast brought us thine beyond. Early let us seek thy favor, let us learn thy will. Do thou put our holy Savior with thy love, our bosoms fill. Let us have Jesus, let us have Jesus. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. 
From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. Therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn together. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Lord God of our forebears, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Mary, God of Miriam, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your church gives honor glory and worship from generation to generation. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Holy food for holy people. the body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. And now if I've done everything correctly, you should see some pictures of sheep as we say Praise the Lord, rise up, rejoicing, worship, thanks, devotion, voicing, glory be to God on high. Christ, your cross and passion, sharing, by this Eucharist declaring, yours the final victory. Rock one shepherd sharing, lost and lonely one voice hearing, is attentive to your word. By your blood, your life receiving, in your body firm believing, bring our doors and you the glory. Forgiving, we go forth alert and living in your spirit, strong and free. Partners in your new creation, seeking 